Welcome to class. Hello, Jello. Hello. Um, Key. So, we made a PowerPoint of a more scientific way of explaining this topic. But our teacher told us that it's better to explain it in our own point of view. Then, let's start there. Thinking about our labels in class. I don't think those people would want to listen to two weirdos talking about their dumb experiences live. So I decided to uh, make a video instead. Ethnocentrism. The act where we think highly of our culture and look down on others. Basically, discrimination. Oh, what do you mean we are an ethnocentric person? Um, no, I did not say that. Where did you get that idea from, huh? Anyways, cultural relativism is understanding a culture based on that culture's point of view rather than yourself. And to study and to understand what they're like no matter how weird or dangerous it may be. Welcome to the two egghead storytelling. We're both eggheads, Jello. You brought us here just for plus points. Sir, do we really have plus points? <laughs> okay. Jello, let's start with our ethnocentrism stories because, yes, I have social media to share. My art like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. One month, my Instagram started growing rapidly because of that one Smangsy post. I started receiving DMs from strangers. You know, they're mostly nice, complimenting my art and stuff. Others are weird, but then this one DM caught my eye. This person's an average American, literally his bio says, from California, football player, and then a random verse from the Bible. He started, Hey! <laughs> and I said, Hello! Then he immediately say, I really like your art. Oh, thank you. But, you're Asian. Uh, okay. I was weirding out with what he said. What does my race have to do with my art? But I continued! Oh, I see. If only you were American, then you'll totally be on my favorite artist list. If I was American, I will be better for this dude? I blocked him in the end. I don't want any race to discriminate my art because of my own race. Asian? It's like every artist you see in America is greater than any other country. How about Van Gogh? She, he's not American. Apparently, he's from Netherlands, yeah. Um, well, I guess it's my turn to tell a story now. As a person who lives in another country, Saudi to be specific, I experienced firsthand the difference of culture between Philippines and theirs. And it's no surprise, I may have thought of some instances where their way of living was weird. For example, this one time when I was still adjusting through living in another place, my parents would take us shopping on the malls and smell that strong perfume the people there would have. <laughs> Ma, but ganun yung amoy? An an sakit sa ilong. Then, my mom would always respond with, Mga pabango nila ang naaamoy mo. Marami sila sa diyang magpabango dahil hindi sila lagi nag-araw-araw naliligo tulad natin. And of course, little me believe in her and thought this was true and found them weird. Another example would be that Islamic prayer people would do at specific times. That really annoyed me. Especially far at 4 a.m. I would remember thinking out loud, Ugh, Why do they even have to do this? <laughs> now, going back, I of course didn't always judge their cultures without trying to understand them. I would remember seeing how the women from the country would wear something they called abaya. I was so interested with it. And I never really questioned it on why this is their culture. This is what you would call the absolute cultural relativism, where you aren't gonna question different culture regardless of where you came from. Lastly, another thing I remember is loving this pizza I would eat, which they would call Oshbalbol. And this made me interested in the different types of food they would have to offer. Oshbalbol. I know, it sounds weird. I see you laughing over what it's called. 
My aunt, one of my mom's best friends, invited my family and her friends to a beach party. She told us that her co-workers were Indian. I was like, cool! People of different diversities. By the way, I don't know how many they are, but they're all hot. The next day is the beach day. I was chilling in our hut, and then they served us food from India. Food choices are good examples of cultural relativism because people have become more tolerant of food from cultures that are not their own. Just like how we grew to love burgers and milk tea, which came from America and Korea. My aunt told me this rice is basmati rice with chicken biryani. And let me tell you, this food is so good! I want to discover a lot of food because my mom's a chef. After the meal, my aunt's co-workers decided to play a game. If you were me, you'd think of basketball or volleyball, but when they went in the sand, it was a whole aggressive fight. I got worried the public was looking at them. I asked one of them, who's sitting beside me, let's call him Madlik. He told me, In the dog dim dim kabadi, two teams, the Raiders' objective is go to the defenders and touch them while shouting, Kabadi, Kabadi, oh, multiple God, times. Oh, the Raiders yeah, shouted also sucks. avoided getting tackled by the team. In my eyes, that was a pretty sick game of theirs. This isn't just some story. This part falls under critical cultural relativism. It asks questions about cultural practices where we seek answers about their culture to understand. In the end, I understood it well. I learned a lot from Jealous Story. As children, just like in Jealous Part, we never really knew about racism and discrimination of other cultures. We just think of them as weird or perhaps different. Many people will confuse being proud and being ethnocentric a lot. I'd like to clear out before we end our video. Being proud of your culture is like admiring it as it is while respecting other cultures. Being ethnocentric, however, is being too proud of your own culture and look at others as something bad or wrong. Hmm, I guess I can say the same too for your story. I learned a lot from it, especially the ones where you went to the beach. It really just shows us how vast and different cultures are to each other. I think we should learn to appreciate this. As cultural relativism goes, it's always good to be interested in others' culture. But if you aren't, then uh, at least be respectful of it then, I guess. Jello finished the video badly, so I'm gonna end it here. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you guys learned something. If I offended anyone, I'm sorry about that, especially Jello. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope you learned something new, and I hope you'll see you again next time.